Hello and welcome to This Is. The Apple event just ended and I have officially found my new computer. Austin, what do we got in the docket? The iPad Air has been upgraded with the M1 processor. Is that your new computer? No. Is the iPhone SE 3 with a 5G capable Apple A15 processor your new computer? No, and that's really all there was for those two products. There's just super slight spec bumps for the MacBook, uh, not MacBook, for the iPad Air and for the SE. What there is a lot to talk about is the Mac Studio, which is, you know, there's a lot of uh, leaks about this one, rumors about this one, yep. but this is a great new device from Apple, and it's it's also like one of their worst products at the same time. Ooh, that's a hot I, take. Like, we'll, we'll we'll get into we'll get into something. Like, so here's the thing: the Mac Studio is a big chunkest version of the Mac Mini. Yeah. In fact, I think uh, we'd have to double check this. I think it's about the same sort of footprint. Which makes sense because a lot of like servers and a lot of people like use like Mac Minis for things. It's like I two Mac Minis stacked on top of each other. Exactly. Roughly. The main thing with the Mac Studio is that it is going to have a lot more power. The existing Mac Mini tops out with an M1 chip. A very respectable chip, a mm -hmm. lot of performance, and a very affordably priced product. You can get the Mac Mini for well under $1,000 right now. Yep. The Mac Studio skips the M1, skips the Pro, goes all up to the Max or the brand new Ultra. Can I just hit you with some specs for a second? Yes. Can yes. we just appreciate this? Okay. So the M1 Max, the chip that is in our laptops and lots mm -hmm. of other devices that you can buy right now, has a 10-core CPU and up to a 32-core GPU. Very performant. Double it. Literally, Literally just you double it. Times so it's two. 20, if you go up to the Ultra, which is very expensive, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you're talking about 20 CPU cores, 64 cores of GPU performance, and up to 128 megabytes, I'm sorry, gigabytes. <laughs> that would be unfortunate. 120 gigabytes of unified memory for both the CPU and the GPU. All right, so the reason I say that the Studio is their best and worst product simultaneously is if we look at the pricing oh, for these God. models. So for the base uh, Mac Studio, which is what I think everyone who's a normal person should get, and I'll preface that in a second, but starts at two grand, and it's a 32 gig of, of unified memory. This is where it's like slightly meh. Um, it's 512 gig SSD, That's but fine. it's got four Thunderbolt ports. You can get a really good Thunderbolt uh, speed drive for a lot less than trying to bump that up yourself. And but for context, if you want to get into that same chip on any other device, which would be something like the 14, you're looking at a minimum of $2,900. So it's a $900 sort of gap in price going with the studio versus a MacBook. And of course, you're going to get better thermals. Now, we've, we're talking a lot about the chips and everything. Let's talk about what the actual device has included on it, like ports. They brought back ports. So we have four Thunderbolt ports on the back, two USB-A's, which is always nice to see. You got HDMI and audio jack, and on the front, you have either two USB-C's or you have two Thunderbolts based on which chip you pick. And a well full-size SD card SD reader. card, yeah. On the front of the device, like they're actually listening to their customers, and I think that's a really good uh, step forward. Yes. But, like, talking about the, the Ultra. <laughs> so, you know the whole thing about how we talked about how the Max is just basically, you, they put two of them together to make the Ultra. They also took two of them price-wise together because yeah. you go from $2,000 for the Max to $4,000 for the minimum Ultra configuration, yeah. and that is with these 48-core GPU. If you want the full beans, maximum M1 Ultra configuration, <sighs> that is a $1,000 upgrade, meaning that you are starting at $5,000 for your Big Mac Chungus Edition. I, um, and mm. so, all right, let's let's give credit where credit is due. Okay. One thing that a, a lot of people just do not realize is that like the M1 Ultra, a chip like this is meant Stupid. for like a high-end recording studio. You know, it's meant for the people over at like uh, Disney, Pixar, that are rendering out movies. It's it's not meant for someone in their dorm room. It's not meant for even us doing YouTube at it's this more than level. We right now we're doing three streams of 4K. Again, it doesn't even put a dent in what we have now, Nothing. and now we just are able to double it. So, like, please don't look at that and be like, oh, yeah, the pricing, blah, blah. Again, it's just not meant for the average Joe because that was kind of the problem with, like, the uh, the XDR display of, like, oh, who's charging $6,000 for display? Well, the people who would buy that, that's exactly what they needed. Absolutely. Also, I just get a little bit of the impression that Apple are doing this because they can Right? They want to have the most powerful thing. So not only do they say oh, it yeah. destroys every PC chip like a 12900K, but also they were saying that with the Ultra, on whatever nebulous benchmark they're using, it outperforms an RTX 3090 at 100 watts compared to 300 watts. So one-third the power, it, same performance, 
as is, the most powerful GPU you can buy right now, at least on the consumer side. I'm super happy yeah. that they've brought out the Mac Studio. This is something that I think makes a lot of sense. I think the base model or a very slightly upgraded base model is what 98% of people should get. Matt, we got to talk about the thing that disappointed me the most. The I, studio display. This was one of the things I was most excited for. Mm -hmm. And I agree, it did end up being super, uh, super disappointing. So, so many people have been asking for a new cinema display for years. So here's the problem, right? So the studio display is similar to what the, the panel is inside of the iMac. So the 27 inch iMac. So it's 27 inch, 5K, 60 Hertz, 600 yeah. nits. Now they've got some weird stuff going on. So they have an Apple A13 Bionic chip inside, which seems really unnecessary. And I got, here's where I got giddy about that because there was one rumor going around, which did not turn out to be true, but that it was going to be able to just straight up have iOS on the the monitor now as someone who docks his uh computer all the time if i if i'm just like oh i have this nice display yeah i dock my computer it's a regular display and i take it off and then suddenly i just have like an ipad yeah. where i could still access you know some some basic apps and files whatever yeah. while the computer's not plugged in that would have been really cool. Instead, but it's not. that A13 is used for the center stage camera, which to be fair, it's nice to have a better camera. It's certainly better than the ultra fine camera that I've used since 2016. Yeah. It also has studio quality mics and great speakers, blah, blah, blah. Here's the problem. It's this just, thing man. starts at $1,599. Yeah. And did I say starts? Because let me reiterate, yeah. starts. Okay, so here's some of the options, right? You can do nano texture glass, which brings it from $1,600 to $1,900. Fair enough, whatever. Then you also get three stand options. You can get VESA, which is nice. You get the standard tilt screen, which or tilt stand, which is similar to what you get with the XDR display. That's something you pay the thousand dollars to get it. And then you can pay an additional four hundred dollars for the tilt and height adjustable stand, meaning that you can get one of these studio displays for twenty three hundred dollars. Which is yeah. It's look okay. Is this very slightly better than my twenty sixteen LG Ultrafine? A little bit. Is it? remotely worth the ridiculous price. Like, no, not for $2,300. This is a miss. This absolutely is a miss. not. This I like think it. what they need to do with this one is I think they need to come in aggressive with this monitor price. And I yeah. think they should have come like done whatever they had to do to get this to be $1,000. Or have additional features. The A13's there. Why can't you yeah. run like, I mean, uh, or, I don't know, maybe put like an M1 or something because like it's already so expensive. Let me use it as an iMac at the same time or something like it just feels like this could have been cool and it's not. Which yeah. is a weird way because, like, this was a good Apple event, right? Uh, all the spec bump stuff was nice and it was cool to see, but it wasn't a huge. I deal. was not expecting the, the M1 Ultra. That like that Great. is something that completely eluded me for uh, for for rumors. But yeah, but like it's it's good. I'm happy that there is a Mac that is so ridiculously powerful, and of course the Mac Pro is going to be like we glued six Ultras together to make a nuclear reactor. Like congratulations, great job. But I think the big takeaway here is that the Mac Studio is an excellent desktop if you spec it correctly. If you really need the extra performance, by all means, congratulations on your tax refund or your <laughs> uh, second kidney that you didn't need, whatever, it's great. It's great, that's an option. I think the base model is actually really good for a lot of people and that yeah. M1 Max is terrific. And I, I fully plan on buying one of those studios for myself. The only thing we're really missing now is the final stage of these products because they said this is the last of the M1 chips. So next we're gonna see M2, right? I feel like we're gonna see M2 MacBook Airs and whatnot in a few months. So make sure to say subscribe to This Is to stay up to date on all the latest Timmy Cook shenanigans and let us know what do you think about the fine announcements from Apple Incorporated today. Let us know because we're dying to know if you're spending $18,000 on Mac Studios.